Welcome to another episode of the Quip Corners Book Corner. And this is part of the Christmas Gift Ideas series. My next guest has been here several times, but every time it's a delight. So please join us and let's learn about this book. See you in a bit. back to the Quip Corners Book Corner, Miss Anna. Good to be here. We begin the same way all the time, smiling, because we find that our time together makes us feel good, but also gives us an opportunity to share some of the writing that we have been doing that we are confident will assist, help support someone else. So I thank you for this opportunity to talk with your group about my work. You're most welcome. It's always a delight having you in the Quiff Corners Book Corner. So thank you for being here. (laughs) So today we're talking about one of the textbooks you've written. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. One of the things that I'd like to offer this particular group is the fact that textbooks are designed for teachers, but are useful for parents as well. Mm. And one of the books that I have written is called Getting Started. And it's a book that I wrote for new classroom teachers, but I believe that can be useful for families as well, because it can support the learning that your young people are, are in. You may decide to use it because you are an after school and an after school program, and you have students of different ages, different grades, different needs, and they come to you with their homework, and you can flip in this book and say, hmm, this is what the teacher may have had in mind. Let's look at what they mean when they talk about writing a persuasive essay. What's the difference between a persuasive essay? an argumentative essay. Let's flip through the book and see. But this also may be used for parents. Again, the young person has come home and said, you know, I think I know what the teacher was talking about, but can you help me, mom? Can you help me, dad? Can you help me, grandmother? Mm. In fact, that's one of the things that I would like to share at this time. This book would be a great book to have on hand as grandparents. When the grandchildren come and you ask them, how are you doing in school? They said, I'm doing pretty well, but you know, grandma, I'm not sure what the teacher meant when she or she said, analyze this poem. And so you can pull out this book. You can turn to page 99 and you will see a diagram of what it means to understand poetry. And you'll say, huh, let's take time to tell the time about poems. And just in that little time, as you look at the T, it means the thought or the theme. The I in time refers to the imagery that the poet may have used. It may be sensory images, It may be imagery like similes and metaphors and personifications. And if you know this yourself, you can show it off. If you don't know it, you can have the young person look into the book. They say, but what about the M? What about the M? In this particular case, the M stands for the music, the sound of poems, the rhythm, the rhyme scheme. It just may be the pattern that the poet has chosen. But the E probably is the most important. It's the emotion. But it's the emotion expressed by the poet, Mm. but also experienced by the reader. So as 
<laughs> as a mother, a sister, a yeah. sibling, yeah. an aunt, an uncle, have this textbook on hand. You can share some of the strategies that I've shared with teachers, but that you can share with your your, your questioners. So okay. that's it. Well, nice. that's part of it. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's interesting because, you know, uh, when my guests are talking, I, um, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to focus, mm -hmm. but I also want to take notes. So for <laughs> some reason, I had a notebook ready <laughs> and okay. I'm like, okay, here I am with the teacher. The best way to show up is with your notebook and your pen. So. <laughs> All right. In your notes. Like, oh. <laughs> Do you have telling? time about poetry <laughs> okay we won't do homework today thank you i appreciate your being so gracious <laughs> but i like you know how you started off by saying that textbooks are written for teachers but they're helpful for parents or by extension caregivers yes yeah? um so, so I'm curious about how you have seen people use this book, you know, to give, I mean, you already gave some examples, but, you know, do you have any other examples? Because people watching this may be like, okay, you know, I'm not this, I'm not this, but I am this, you know, and it's almost like, how, you know, how can I fit that in? Please. Are you a friend? Mm. Okay. This may be a gift you choose to give as a friend who supports it. Perhaps may be a new classroom teacher. Mm. It may be a new classroom teacher who is just beginning yeah. to teach yeah. English language arts. Nice. It may be English language arts is being taught on the continent of Africa. Yeah. On an island where English is not the first language. But it may be the language that your school insists or suggests that you offer. Yeah. And being able to use a textbook similar to this one, you will find that some of the words that are used in the curriculum may be unclear to you. And so you can refer to this book and be able to teach better yourself. Or if you were the friend, you can give it as a gift. Hmm. To a new teacher, yeah. To someone that in your, I keep saying in your church family because that's very special to me. Someone yeah. in your church family, and you have watched over the semester that one of the young people is struggling somewhat, yeah. and you say, "I'd like to give them a gift that is useful, yeah, but useful over time." Yeah. And so. You don't have to be a mom. You don't have to be a classroom teacher. You can be a friend to right. give a gift that yes. will be useful. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you for that. You know, it's interesting how God drops things in a person's heart. So I'm just going to share two things that dropped in my heart as you were speaking. The first is, in some instances, there are people who have moved from a different part of the world yes. to the Americas, you know, mm -hmm. the US, Canada. And mm -hmm. it's sounding to me like this book can act as a bridge that helps it's... with integration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's a, that's a good point to make. In fact, that's one of the sections in the book that I talk about the fact that each student has a right to his or her own home language. And if perhaps you have a child in a school where they may not be offering that, reading this book and looking at that chapter may give you some argument points and why it is important for students to be able to use their own version of English or use their own home, home language yeah. Or I call it the heart language. Uh -huh. What language do they think in? Yes. What language do they feel in? Yeah. And then perhaps translate it to English. Mm -hmm. But to insist that a student only speak 
radio or television English yeah. is stifling learning. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I talk about. And yeah. so if you happen to be a family that has moved from one area to another, and you want to have some argument points to present in support of your child's learning, consider looking at this particular textbook that talks about that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then the second thing that dropped in my heart, you know, when you said, are you a friend? And then you also said the church family. Mm -hmm. It then hit me. I mean, because I, um, I serve in the children and youth ministry. I mean, that's something I've done for decades and continue to love. But it's also possible that sometimes within the church family, you may notice a child, not necessarily mm -hmm. over, you know, under your care, mm -hmm. but you may notice that there's a child who's struggling. Right. So mm -hmm. it's something like this book would also be a good gift to help mm -hmm. lift that child or that family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is true. Anytime we can affirm to someone we know that we understand that you may be struggling, but you're not alone. Mm. Of course, you have God, but God's hands has human fingers. Amen. And sometimes in our hand, in our fingers, we can pass along a book like this. Yeah that affirms that the person is being seen, but they're not being passed up. And mentioning okay, the Bible, it said, when did you see me in need? Yes. And it says, whenever yes. you have doubt, yes. the least of these, you have served me. This is one of the things that is attributed to Christ is he's talking to his disciples. And yeah. he says, whenever you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And he says, well, when have we seen you in need? He says, anytime you see anyone in need and you help them, it is so you are serving me. And in this particular case, I say, giving a textbook may be a way of showing God's love mm. to someone that you see can benefit from it. Yes. Wow. Wow. I would never have imagined we'll get to this place in this conversation, but it's just amazing how God causes us to do something and we just never, at least for me, you, you know, you never understand the full extent of how that can be a blessing to others. Let me say, we can never fully understand. We probably never will fully understand but we do know what love is. Point taken. <laughs> love is giving. Yes. yes. And at holiday times, we sometimes wonder, how can I give something that will be useful, mm -hmm. but also worth the investment? Yes. And because this is a book designed for work with students, and as soon as the students know how to read, and as long as they have to read, to learn. Yes. There will be something about which they will have a question. And if you are talking to, let's say, a high school student mm -hmm. who's taking social studies, and the social studies ask them to write a report on which they take a side, yeah. and to show that, you may say, oh, that's right. I remember in that book that a good yeah. argument yeah. appeals to the head, uh -huh. to the heart, yeah. and to the pocket. Mm -hmm. And just by showing this image, your student who's asking you about it may say, I get it. Yeah. I've got to come yeah. up with some firm facts that appeal yeah. to the head. I must come up with some emotional ideas that appeals to the heart of the person okay. I'm talking to or about. But... I also have to appeal to the pocket. How will this decision affect the finances of the mm. person who's spending the money and the finance of the person who's benefiting by it? And as we were talking about sometimes about uh, our Christian settings, 
This is another way of showing how we share the goodness of Christ. Mm. We appeal to the head. We appeal to the heart. But occasionally, we also appeal to the pocket. And so this textbook can work for academic reasons. It can work for emotional reasons. But it also can work for spiritual reasons. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you, you asked. I know. I'm soaking it in, too. But thank you so much. I know that your books are available on Amazon. Correct. Uh, where else can people get copies of this book? Copies of my book are available on Amazon, but they also are available through Barnes & Noble. Okay. And they are available through the publisher, who okay. is Roman and Littlefield, R-O-W-M-A-N and Littlefield. Okay. All three of those spaces will provide you with links to purchase the books. Okay. But if you can't remember that, just go online and put my name in, Anna J. Small Roseboro, and it's very likely that the books will show up on one or more of those. If not, contact Sister Ada, <laughs> and she'll put you in touch with me. For sure, for sure. And we will put, you know, some of that information below this video so people okay. can get to it. But yes, you can always reach out to me. I'm happy to <laughs> redirect. Thank happy you. to redirect. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining me in the Quip Corners Book Corner. And thank you for being a blessing in so many ways. Thank you for having me. I, I tell my husband all the time, I'm going to be online with Ada. I'm going to be <laughs> online <laughs> And so, thank you for having me. You're welcome. God bless you. It was, shall I say, nice and liberating to realize that textbooks are written for teachers, but helpful for parents and caregivers. So, see, that's such a great nugget. It was nice also listening to the different ways this textbook can be used. Ms. Anna said something. She said, God's hands, by human fingers, something like that. So each of us can be a blessing. Below this, you'll see how you can get or even order copies of this book for yourself and for others. I look forward to reading your comments on this video. See you in another episode. God bless you. Bye now.